Thanks for watching Double Tap TV here on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, do hit that subscribe button down below. In this clip, Stephen Scott and I debate and talk all about reading. What are the tools that he uses to keep up on books? Take a look. The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being with us every single week. I am Mark Aflalo. And I'm Stephen Scott. And coming up this week, we're going to share with you the story of two apps. Not one, but two this week. Designed to help you read better using your smartphone or your computer or both, we'll meet the developer of Speech Central, Ivan Eachin, who has made his app available free of charge to blind people who use voiceover. And we'll meet Winston Chen, the developer of the popular Voice Dream apps for iPhone, as well as the brand new Voice Dream Reader now on Mac. Stephen, I've got to ask you this question, which is, you know, as someone with low vision, are you a reader in general? Do you like reading books, paper books, or listening to audio books? What's your preferential way of consuming that type of medium? Um, well, it's interesting. I, I, growing up with partial sight, one thing you get told a lot is use what vision you have, and that means you're encouraged to read, and usually large print books. Uh, but I really struggled with that. I could manage a couple of lines of text, and then I'd really struggle beyond there. And that's always been the case. Uh, and interestingly, audiobooks was something I was never really encouraged to use. All my blind friends, they did get audiobooks, and they would get all their notes provided in audio. So that was really useful. Uh, and it meant that they went on to have, you know, big glittering careers in law and accountancy. And, you know, I became a guy who just talks about technology for a living. Not bad, I guess. Uh, and I'm not complaining. <laughs> but, you know, ultimately, it did clearly have an impact on my education. So, you know, in terms of uh, growing up, that was the, the way I did it. Now, it is pretty much audiobooks. But I'll be honest, I really struggle to get through audiobooks without falling asleep. How do people do it? How do you listen to six and a half hours of a book without falling asleep? Definitely not all in one shot. Now, to give you a little bit of background on my side of things, <laughs> Um, I, I, my vision is fine, obviously, but uh, I've always struggled to read. I've always struggled to just to have the attention and the willpower to get through any type of book. I had no problem with short articles or little things in magazines. Obviously, as a child, you go for the pictures anyway, uh, and hopefully they tell the story. But I've always, I've always struggled to read. My wife can read books like she can finish a novel in a day or a couple days. It's amazing. I see her take books on trips or just really dive deep into a book, and she really gets through them pretty quick. And I'm jealous of that. Now, I discovered audiobooks on Audible about probably four or five years ago. The first book, and it wasn't a long time ago, the first book that I actually consumed was the Walter Isaacson version of Steve Jobs' biography oh, in, yes. in audiobook yep. form. And it took me probably two weeks to finish the entirety of it because it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to consume. But I did it in chunks. Yeah. I did it in chunks when I was traveling. I did it in chunks when I was in the car. I often had to rewind a little bit to remember exactly where I was at and to, to get myself back into it. But I did enjoy the experience. I actually wasn't pushed away from it like some other people have. And I, I speak to a lot of people about this and they just can't dive into audiobooks. They love podcasts, but audiobooks are a different story. I think because of just the monotonous nature of reading the printed word. It's not like a podcast, which is developed and normally produced to be engaging audibly, but mm. an audiobook really isn't, right? No, that's right. I can give you an, an important and hopefully helpful tip on this one. And this is not mine. This is actually from Red Sale, who is the host of My Life in Books over on AMI Audio. He uh, told me this, and, and I think it's a brilliant tip. He said, because uh, he was asking me the kind of books that I read, and I said, oftentimes, it's those kind of books that you're reading, or political books, you know, but factual books, basically. And he said, I think that's your problem. If you listen to fiction, you don't consume it the same way. You can, you can listen to it as you move around the house, as you're doing chores, as you're doing whatever else. You will probably find, you, because you can miss out bits more easily, um, you don't have to be hanging on every word or you feel like you're going to miss that crucial piece of information like you do in factual books. Perhaps it's it's that that's holding me back from reading. And I, I actually, I haven't tried it, but that is something I'm going to try because I think he might be onto something there. I'm with you. That was a similar kind of book I read at the beginning, uh, or, you know, I say read, but listened to on an audio. 
and I had the same problem. I really struggled and you know, I kept going back and kept going back to the point I gave up because I thought I can't get through this. I'm just never gonna get through it. So maybe that's it. Maybe that's what it's about. Maybe it's just, it's the concentration that's involved in factual versus fiction. Yeah, I think you make a really good point there. I think that, you know, fiction would be a little bit more descriptive in nature, just trying to give you the image in your head, whether it's in written word or it's audibly, and I think that makes a really, really good point. And you know what, I'm gonna try that out as well. But you know, I think about my kids, and my kids, you know, they read a lot. My daughter loves reading, you know, articles, and loves reading books. My son is really into anime, and loves reading kind of comic genres. And they read so fast, and I'm so jealous of them, because I just, I could never get into it. But you know, it also, it comes to ability too. Like, I feel like there is a little bit of ADHD in me that just doesn't have the patience to get through it, and I don't wanna push myself further <laughs> yeah. there. And, and I think that you know, when you think about this from the disability point of view, there must be so many challenges to try to get through what we we take for granted as something as simple as just reading a book. But you've highlighted something really important that yes, there are challenges for people who are visually impaired, obviously, and that goes almost without saying, right? But the truth is that we all have challenges in life. And you know, it doesn't you don't have to be visually impaired to have challenges reading. Now, of course, we know people who have dyslexia will have challenges with reading. Uh, you've mentioned it yourself, and it's not necessarily anything you can pin to one particular uh, di disability or anything like that. It's not about that. It's just that, you know, some of us just have challenges reading. And that is why I think the apps we're going to talk about today will be really interesting to you as much as to me. Yeah, let's let's take a quick break. I want to dive into this because I don't want to wait any longer. This is Double Tap TV. Stephen Scott and Mark Aflala with you. We're going to take a quick break and come back and get into these apps. Stick around. You're watching Double Tap TV. Get involved. Follow us at Double Tap On Air or email us feedback at Double Tap On Air Com. Double Tap TV will be right back. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and tune in to Double Tap TV every week on AMI TV.